Hey, I like robots. But I never seem to make enough of them. Oh. So when Boyle Hobby Time messaged me and said, Hey, want to make a robot with me and my buds? I was like, heck yeah I do. Hi folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And today I made the Sith Buster. Now, Mr. Hobby Time did lay out a couple of rules we needed to follow in order to keep to the brief. One, it needs to be kit bashed or scratch built. Two, it needs to be Star Wars themed. And three, it needs to be at a 1 to 12 action figure scale. I wanted to do a kit bash, except I, uh, I don't have a kit, much less enough to facilitate bashing multiple kits together, so it's gonna have to be scratch built. Now, I knew I wanted to do something with BB 8, and, you know, the Hulkbuster is the tits, so it seemed only natural to smash those two together. Besides, what with Disney owning both Star Wars and the Marvel Universe, I feel like I can get away with marrying the two. Finally, to keep to the scale, I know that BB-8 scaled down is roughly 2 inches tall, so I just need to shrink the Hulkbuster body down until the whole thing stands at around 7 inches tall. 7 inches is good for me, since it's roughly twice the size of things I'm used to holding, and I've got two hands, so the math checks out. Now up until this point I've been bulking out the underlying body so that I can start adding armored plate dealies onto it. In the past when I built robots, they've generally been from ideas with limited visual resources or they've just been the machinations of my own syphilitic mind. Meaning that it's been easy enough to fake details and build things in any way that I want since there isn't anything to specifically reference it against. The Hulkbuster on the other hand is about as fleshed out as a metal boy can be. I mean if you really wanted to make this thing yourself, you could just buy one of the dozens of Hulkbuster action figures available, chomp the head off, and pop a BB-8 in place, and then call it a day. However, that would probably turn out to be a pretty sh** video, so instead I'm going to try and meticulously build up a detailed, easily recognizable robot with soft, malleable, fingerprinty clay. The best way I found to approach this was to work in easily defined sections. I'm starting with the legs, then I'll add the torso and the head, before finally adding the arms and the hands. Now when I say that this is the best way that I've found, I mean that you're seeing at minimum the fourth iteration of each of these body parts, since the prior attempts were so poorly planned out and executed that I had to start over three or four times before I got to a point that I was happy with. Having a lot of reference images on hand is key to making this stupid robot body since there are so many things that are laying underneath and you really need to build it up layer by layer. Basically, it needs to be approached in the same way as constructing a human, except instead of bones, muscle, and skin, you've got wires, gears, and metal plates. You can always try and remove the underlying detail once you've built up the majority of the body, but trying to remove or add parts without messing around at the top layer is an exercise in frustration, so learn from my mistakes and take your time. However, once you've got all the big chunks in place, you can start adding in all the detail, which in this case is going to be a whole bunch of lines and rivets. The benefit of making something like the Hulkbuster is that it's immediately recognizable, but nobody really notices the little details. I'm going to take full advantage of your ignorance and add random greeblies wherever I feel like. What do these little panels do? I don't know. Maybe they're important. Maybe they're not. Maybe they contain some kind of important electrical wiring. Maybe they're fridge magnets. The point is, as long as it looks cool and the overall shape is correct, it doesn't really matter. Which is fortunate, because these feet were surprisingly hard to even fake the shape of. However, once I've added enough detail to the legs, I can throw them in the oven and lock them in place so that I can get started on the torso. I'll start by building it up until I have a slightly oversized, muscly robot man before using a sharp knife to cut away the excess. I want to remove clay as much as I can at this point rather than add it in, since cutting the clay will leave me with a nice hard surface, whereas adding it in tends to have a bit more of a biological look. Once I'm happy with how much I've removed, I can start adding the detail over top. Now as with the legs, there's a lot of detail that's hiding under sheets and plates, but in order to keep the shape of the body accurate, it needs to be added in its entirety. If you only add the parts that are visible, then the plates that sit on top will sit oddly or won't be the correct size in relation to the parts that are visible. Now there are a few pieces that are integral to the design and without them it would just look weird. Now the Iron Man, nuclear, reactor, chess piece thing is definitely one of them, so I took my time making sure it didn't just look good, it looked good enough. 
Then I can get to work on the backpack reactor thing. I don't know what it is, but I'd like to think that it's Iron Man's nod to Quasimodo. Same thing as the front, I'll remove what I can to keep the surface flat, and then chop out the center bit until I've got a nice recess in my Robo Spina Bifida. Then I can start sticking random things inside of it until I've got the general shape of whatever this thing is. Then I'm back to adding random blocks of clay until you can't really tell what's what. I think that's really the goal at this point, to add as much random detail in until your eyes start to hurt, and you can't really tell if what's there is accurate or not. Now before we go any further, it's time to make a head. I'll start by rolling out a ball of clay that's roughly the size of horse steroids, then I'll chop it in half. I'll add the little circles on top by poking the little circles on top before poking more circles in the side where BB-8's eyeball will be. Then I can use the viewport as my reference to start marking out the rest of the panel lines. Now last time I made R2-D2, I made each individual panel out of clay before adding them on top. This time, I'm going to be lazy and paint them on instead. The end result is good, as long as you're viewing it from the other side of the room. But most of it's hidden by the armor, so it shouldn't really matter. Then once I've added some little wire antennae, I'll roll out a bit of clay onto a tube and cut it into shape. This will act as the little bit of metal that surrounds the viewport. Now to help keep it in shape, before I take it off the tube, I'm going to fire it using a heat gun to help cure it in place. Then with the head in place, I can start adding the final detail onto the torso, like the connection points between the shoulder and the hunchback, as well as some more detail lines in all of the armor plates. Then it's time to toss the torso in the oven and I can get started on the arms. First things first, I need to drill a couple big old holes to allow for my armature wire, and then a half pint of super glue drained into each of the holes will ensure that my arms won't be flailing about while I'm working on them. Then I can bend the arms into the proper position and add a thin layer of cause clay over top. Now the astute among you may have noticed that I always add a thin layer of light clay before I add the darker clay over top. The lighter clay is cause clay and it's super flexible and pretty sticky so it works really well as a base layer and the darker stuff is super sculpy which is a lot less sticky and flexible but easier to blend so I find it works well for this sort of work. The plan is to bulk out the arms, then add the detail on top, but I'm halfway tempted to stop here and turn these into proper green Hulk arms, because I think that would be hilarious. However, in the interest of not straying too far from what's been asked of me, I'll start adding the various armor plates and gears and wires, and other robotic bits and bobs until I have an appropriately looking robo-arm. Mr. Hobby Time, if you're watching, I hope you can see and appreciate just how much restraint I'm showing here. Now as with the other sections for the body, once I've gotten the main shape sorted I can start adding the details by either carving out larger sections or adding random little greeblies to break up some of the flat surfaces. Any of the sections that are going to be front and center, like the chest, the shin guards and the forearms, I'll try to make as true as I can to the references. I've made a rough template out of paper that I'll use to cut out a pair of shoulder pads. Then while the clay is still soft and malleable, I'll fold them around the model to get the shape right before blasting them with a heat gun to lock the shapes in place. This will give me a nice hard surface to work with and I'll make a much thinner version using the same template which I can then glue onto the already hardened shells. Then I can carve all the details into the uncured clay while not worrying about deforming the shape. I'm going to make the hands out of that aforementioned cosplay since they won't have any supporting wire and I don't want to snap them off while I'm running around my house making little blaster noises. The Hulkbuster's hands are made up of little gears and metal plates because, you know, robots, and I was somewhat stymied trying to figure out how best to make this, so I spent a lot of time anxiously swinging clay around in the hopes that I would be struck by a bolt of genius. Fortunately, what I lack in genius, I make up for in wormy dealies. These will be used to make the fingers, which I can then wrap some smaller, flatter, wormier dealies around to make my robot fingies. Basically, I'll add sets of three to each of the fingers until my hands look like big, technologically advanced robot gauntlets, when in reality, they're just wormy dealies with bandages and a fancy paint job. And then because I'm a man and I'm incapable of changing methods halfway through a project, I'm going to continue adding random square plates until it's so busy that you can't tell if it looks stupid. 
Finally, the last thing to make is the things that go on the arms. The blasters, or the shields. I don't really know what they are. These things. To make these, I've rolled out a sheet of clay, cut it down into smaller strips, then layered them on top of one another and cut them down to the shape and size I want. Then all I need to do is add some smaller strips and cut some details in until I've got a pair of... things. Then I'll do a quick test fit to make sure everything fits and will line up properly and I can add my primer and base coat. Now before I get to the painting, I'm going to remove the wires from the bottom and hope it's able to stand on its own two feet. If it does stand up, it's not because I plant it, but because I'm an idiot savant that fails upwards. Nice. Fortunately, painting should be really easy and you'll only need orange, silver, and black. Oh, and gunmetal. And white, and probably some yellow, and I guess some blue. And you'll need some inks for wash, which means you'll probably need flow improver and some matte medium. And then you'll need some matte varnish and gloss varnish. But that's it. I'm always on the lookout for ways to improve myself, or failing that, ways to look like I'm improving myself. All the fancy painters mention using wet palettes, so naturally I got myself one. And now, not only is my painting described as adequate, fine, or I've seen worse, but I now also have this stylish armband that will definitely net me some street cred. It's also giving me the street cred cojones necessary to try and skip as many steps as possible and then pass this on to you like I have any idea what I'm doing. For instance, the idea here is that I don't want to add the wash into each of these recesses, but I also don't want to discolor that white paint too much. So I'm going to coat the entire thing in a nice misting of water and then apply a very thin wash over everything. Hopefully, the wash will seep down into all these creaks, cracks, and crevices, leaving me with a nice highlighting and minimal splotching over top. And it, uh, worked way better than it had any right to. Other than a bit of touch-up with a Q-tip, the wash went everywhere I wanted it to, and there was no splotching to worry about. <sighs> Then it's on to painting the detail. This is a pretty straightforward process. Put paint on brush, put brush on model, remove brush, but leave paint behind. And then you kind of repeat that a whole bunch of times with whatever colors you want. I'm going with gunmetal on all the gears and underlying parts, and a nice BB-8 orange on randomly selected plates. I wanted to give it enough color to be interesting, but still leave enough white that it's still obviously a BB-8 inspired Sith Buster. Speaking of inspired, you know what inspires me? my Patreons. These wonderful people allow me to continue making tiny nerdy things on a full stomach and with a comfortable level of inebriation. So I'd like to give a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Ridley, Emmy Kuna, Ezra Fibs, Merle, Justin Bryan, Anthony Castellanita, Whatever Tups, Sane, and a little frog. If you like these silly videos, then consider subscribing, liking the video, and leaving me a comment down below. Let me know what lovable childhood character you'd like to see bastardized next. Of course, if you want to go that one step further, you can check out my Patreon and see if there's a food you'd like to help put in my belly. Otherwise, it's time to paint BB-8's eyeball black and add little blue lights around the body before cracking out my acrylic paint pens to give the chest plate a rebel-inspired insignia. Then I'll fill the viewport with a big dollop of UV resin and I can start assembling all the pieces. Finally, I'll give BB-8's entire body a coat of gloss varnish. Ooh, shiny. And then it's time to make a base. Now, I've got a couple of these carving foam blocks lying around that I never use because they're so dusty and make a horrible mess, but they're great for rocky bases once you cut, snapped, and ripped them apart. Then I'll crack out my old friend Black Mod Podge to give it a thin coating to protect everything before painting it with a dark gray. Then it's just a case of progressively lighter dry brushes working my way through grey, bone, then white, followed by a heavy helping of Bon Maman Black Cherry Wash. This will get applied liberally over everything, then once that's dried I'll do a final dry brush with the white to really highlight the edges. Now I want the Sith Buster to be the star of the show, but I also want to make it clear that it's a hero of the rebellion, stomping out any trace of the Galactic Empire. So I figured I'd make it real subtle and have BB-8 literally stomping on an imperial flag. To make the flag, I've rolled out a paper-thin layer of dark red clay, which I've cut to size and using a template painted a black circle into the middle of. 
Then I've printed out an imperial insignia which I've cut the white sections out of and I'll use that as a means to easily transfer the white onto the black. Once the paint's dried, I'll rip up the edges of the flag and poke little holes into it before draping it over the rock. Once I'm happy with how it's lying, I'll cure the clay using a heat gun, making sure not to melt my styrofoam rock beneath. Finally, to make everything a tiny bit more worn, I'll dust everything with a thick layer of brown pigment before adding the Sith Buster and dusting its feet as well. Now to keep the pigment in place, I use hairspray. I recommend Umberto Giovanni because it's what I found in the bathroom, but any hairspray works. Otherwise, once your studio smells like a cheap Montreal brothel, it's time for the glamour shots. There you go folks, I hope you enjoyed this, I'm only a little bit sorry that I made it, but I don't think it's entirely my fault since I felt peer pressured into it. Speaking of peers, make sure you go and check out these incredible creations by these incredible creators. It's always amazing to see what people will do with a simple prompt and I feel safe saying they absolutely nailed it. Otherwise we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers.